Welcome to another episode of The Naked Turner. I'm pretty excited out here today because we're getting some much uh, anticipated and needed rain in uh, Northern California and up into the Sierra. So uh, it's making me happy that we're getting some moisture here to try to help thwart some of the drought conditions that we've been having. Uh, our grasslands are getting green again and hopefully we're building up some water in our reservoirs, streams, rivers, creeks, and lakes. Um, anyway, without further ado, I wanted to get started on something that I uh, roughed out last night and kind of wanted to go over a little of the detail on how I'm doing this so people could maybe give it a try themselves. Uh, I am doing another Celtic knot or atomic structure uh, canister. The layout on this one turned out a little bit funny, um, but you're going to get some inconsistencies whenever you try this, and uh, getting something as perfect as you can with maybe a few beautiful imperfections is always nice. So let's take a look at this process. All right, so what I wanted to show you here is how I uh, went about creating this Celtic knot. Last time I did this, I made my cuts on my bandsaw, and what I had done was take and do a bandsaw kerf cut with a secondary cut, leaving a little bit left at the edge of the board to make it easier to glue up and continue doing the cut. That worked great, but then I started thinking, well, if I'm not in a hurry and uh, I have time, I could prep out one of these on my chop saw. So these two lines here would represent the thickness of this piece of wood which I would be laying into this board. So um, I would take and make a chop saw cut and then take and glue in a strip of eighth inch thick material into that space. Clamp the piece up which is much more challenging when you don't have, when you're not leaving a little piece of your board. But on the chop saw of course um, because it's a circular chop saw I can't really leave a square edged cut on that without going back in and removing material which at that point I might as well do it on the bandsaw. So I cut all the way through, I glue in a piece here, clamp it up and then that gets turned. I mark everything so I'd say this is an A face, A face, right hand side and that way I know I would then flip it away from me and do B face, B face, C face, C face and so on to deface always marking the right hand end. That way if I ever get confused after I've cut these pieces apart I know I still have registration marks that will show me what I want to get back to. So once I've glued and clamped that four times filling the um, kerf cut of my chop saw with a, sm a small spline of contrasting wood I end up with a four-sided piece of wood that has those kerf cuts cut into it. Let me just change focus here a little. So I end up with a, uh, a square piece, a rough blank, that I can then put between centers and start turning to come up with this shape. All right, and you can see here I had a little bit of a uh, problem with this joint here lining up perfectly as well as with this joint over here lining up perfectly. And that was because of the fact that the pieces moved or twisted a little bit as I was clamping and gluing them up. Plus, um, I, did, I band sawed this thin strip and then just sanded it down on my um, surface sander, my stationary sander. So it's not exactly square. Um, I don't have a planer. Uh, that's something that I would like to get in the future is to have a planer so that I could take and run something like this through my planer and get everything nice and perfectly square and flat. Um, but I don't even mind these little bits. It almost kind of makes it look like it's weaving in behind and coming out in a little different location on the other side. Uh, like I said before, a little bit of beautiful imperfection is fine with me. I'm not striving for ultimate perfection because I know that that is pretty much unattainable. Uh, having said that, this piece is now roughed into a cylinder. I had a little bit of a problem with the lid I was making. I got some chipping and tearing out. So I'm going to make a different 
contrasting probably sapile lid or maybe even another piece of uh, maple with a sapile inlay or something like that but I just kind of wanted to show you this process now I'm going to be hollowing this out uh, and I end up with this Celtic knot or atomic structure design which I personally really like so I just wanted to share that a quick little video with you and maybe when this piece is done I will uh, post a couple still images of this finished piece. Here's a view from the inside of my shed looking out right now and we're getting a few really nice uh, heavy downbursts of rain so uh, it's really nice really really nice for us to be getting this here we need it so badly hopefully you can see some of that if I can do a little different focal range here. There we go. Just a little bit of the gate. And a little bit of the plum tree. Alright, I'm coming up with a pretty nice looking shape here. It's extremely thin, maybe even a little too thin. Uh, but I don't think so. It's probably down to about a, a little less than an eighth inch out here and then about an eighth inch here in the middle. I've done sort of a slight curve to this piece. Now I'm going to be finishing off the top, sanding it down to 320 and putting some finish on. And then I'll share the finished image with you. Guess what? Another glass of fresh squeezed juices of vegetables and fruits. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling pretty lucky. Uh, Naked Turner subscribers out there, if you get a chance, do yourself a favor and uh, have some fresh squoze juice. And I don't know if squoze is a word, but fresh squeezed. But I like the word squoze better. Alright, so I'm just about to part this piece off. And it's coming out real nice. I've got the parting almost completely done. But before I did, I used a little bit of sandpaper and sand it back in here very carefully because it's a tight little recess right up next to my uh, jaws of my chuck um, and I'm using an extremely thin parting tool which I made uh, out of a forged steel old kitchen knife from the 1940s that uh, I happen to have inherited at a garage sale and uh, this particular one is made from some carbon steel, so it's a really nice, keeps a good sharp edge, very, very narrow. It's under a sixteenth of an inch in width, but about a sixteenth of an inch at its wide point up here. Always remember when you're um, parting something off, do give yourself at least one and a half blade widths so that you have wiggle room and your tool doesn't bind. Uh, so right now, I'm just about to part this off, but I wanted to show you that. And, oh, I was going to turn it on here and see if um, you might be able to see any kind of cool patterns at different speeds once I play this back. Hopefully there will be some kind of cool patterning going on. show you a couple stills. I know I keep saying that, but I promise I really will. Thank you for watching this short episode of The Naked Turner. Please give me a like if you enjoyed this video, and share it if you'd be so kind. If you get a chance and you're not a subscriber, please click subscribe. If you are a subscriber, I thank you so much for your continued support. Keep turning, be safe, and have a good one.